Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I'm Nyx, who traveled from Canada to Serbia, and I am here permanently. To all my Serbian subscribers and viewers, thank you so much for your support. Zdravo, kako ste? Ja sam bolisna, strašno. Anyways, to all my English-speaking people, how are you all? I am sick. I am here to still do this video, but please bear with me with my voice. It was super important I still did a video for you guys because this week I wanted to talk about all the culture shocks, and this is what I've experienced. I am looking for help from my fellow Serbs here. I'm looking for two things. Um, first, I'm looking for an up and coming artist or someone who makes beats or music here that wants to share with me their music so I don't have to use tutorial music anymore. It is great for both of us. Tutorial music really sucks and you get the exposure in YouTube videos and I will put your details in the comment section so that when people like your music, they're able to either proceed over to your YouTube page, your SoundCloud or however you share your music. That is my first request. My email is going to be put below in my description so that you can actually send me an email and not have to put it through on the comment section. My second request is I am looking for somewhere in the um, Novi Sad area to purchase a giant Serbian flag. I not only just want this giant Serbian flag for my home, but I also need to make an intro video and I'm really looking for something quite large. So if you guys have any leads on where I can get it from, I know it exists because during Christmas, I seen it when people were driving in the truck convoy. So if you can let me know where in the Novi Sad area, I'm fine with even Belgrade actually, where I can purchase a giant Serbian flag, I would be ever so grateful. Again, my details of how to contact me um, by email are below in the description. Today I'm going to bring you 10 culture shocks that I've experienced since moving from Canada to Serbia. And no, I am not complaining because I know that I have some attackers that will come to me and say, why are you complaining? I'm not complaining. Just a culture shock. Before I left Canada, I actually watched videos of culture shocks that people had gone through moving to Serbia and it helped me prepare for my move. So in case anybody else is moving abroad or here to Serbia, great decision, um, I'm going to prepare you for that move. So um, they're not in any order. We're just going to talk about the culture shocks in the order that I think of them. Okay. Number one. And like, to me, this actually was a culture shock when I was on vacation, not a culture shock this time around, um, and not a complaint. Okay, the first and most sensitive topic for my Serbs is smoking indoors. So I was one of those expats and I came here and I'm like, like, why can't they just ban smoking here? Like, smoking's banned in Canada. And then I read the best comment and like strašno moment the reason why is because it starts with one thing i moved here for freedom so first i'm going to talk about the shock even if there's a no smoking sign you'll probably see people smoking you go in a restaurant they're smoking you go um i don't know anywhere barbershop they're smoking um <clears throat> So at first I was like, ah, oh, why are they smoking everywhere? Now I'm like, because it's their God-given right to. Uh, so back in Canada, it was banned. And someone easily um, just explained it in a post on Facebook in one of the expat groups I'm in. And it really helped change my perception on the rule. It starts with one rule. We moved here for freedom. Um, smoking indoors. Uh, Definitely sucks for the non-smokers, but the majority of the Serbs are smokers here, and I moved here to adapt to their culture, so this is what it is. If you start asking them to impose a rule to change smoking indoors, it starts with, okay, well, now you can smoke on this half of the restaurant as a rule from the government. And then it starts with, okay, now you can no longer smoke indoors, you have to smoke outside. And then that's a new rule. 
And then it comes a, a bigger rule is like, oh, you can no longer smoke here outside. You actually have to smoke over there outside. And then the government gets even bigger. You know what? You can't smoke anywhere except for these designated areas. But what it's doing is controlling the mind and the human behavior. And whether it's smoking or something else, it's imposing the option for the government to imply rules on the way we want to enjoy our freedom. And that's not okay. And that's what I'm running from in Canada. And I know I'm gonna have Canadians that are like, hey, you know, we don't have that going on here. You're blindfolded and I, that's why I'm here and you're there. Um, but if you're moving here, uh, don't come here and complain about smoking. The Serbs will not take it lightly. So that's my first culture shock that I went through. Um, the other culture shock is, it's a culture shock. It's an exciting one. So unfortunately, uh, it is the season to get sick. A lot of us are getting sick everywhere in the world. It's not special to any country. So I had to go to my first doctor's appointment. Now, it was scary. Like if you think about it and you've grown up in the country you're in, it's so easy to just go to your doctors. But like, imagine, I don't speak the language so my husband has to speak for me. I don't know anyone from anyone. I don't even know where's good to go, where's not good to go. Anyways, long story short, I find somewhere, we make an appointment and this is where it gets culture shocky to me. Hello, like to book an appointment today. I can see you today? Uh, sure, absolutely. Canada? If it's a walk-in, meaning I'm gonna see someone same day, I'm easily waiting a couple hours to see a doctor and I'm seeing whoever is there. In Serbia, I'm able to call the doctor I wanna see. And this is not once, it's not twice, not three times now. I mean, my whole family's sick right now, so we've been through it. Um, if it's not the same day appointment to see the doctor you wanted to see, it's the very next day. I was like, my family doctor in Canada? I would have to book, I sometimes would book a month in advance, an appointment once a week in case we needed it. And I'd rather cancel it out than not have it in case we needed it because I didn't want to wait two weeks to see a doctor. When you're sick and you want to see a doctor, you want to see a doctor. When you're sick, you don't want to wait in a waiting room for two hours. You're sick. You want to be at home. You want to be in bed. Anyways, that was culture shock. <clears throat> Another shock. I had to go to the dentist. I got a toothache. And my daughter had to go to the dentist. She needed two baby teeth removed. So I go to the dentist for my toothache. She takes a look, the dentist. Oh, same day appointment as well takes a look at the tooth area, cleans it up, uses tools, spends like a good 10 minutes with me, finishes, and I'm like, she's like, okay, like, you know, come back if it's still bothering you. I'm like, okay. I'm like, so how much? She's like, nishta, nothing. Nothing? Why would it be nothing? She said it was only 10 minutes. You know, in Canada, there's no way I can even sit in that chair and not be charged like 80 or 100 bucks. I sat there and she actually did work on me and I did not get charged. Strašno. Canadians, wow. <laughs> um, so another one, I take my daughter to the same very dentist, book an appointment, same day. Um, two baby teeth need to be removed. So if anybody is not from Canada, I'm gonna let you know, in Canada it's about $200 per tooth to have your tooth removed with some um, freezing in the area. So we don't even inquire about costs. It needs to get done. The reality is just take them out. So they remove my daughter's two baby teeth. We go and get the bill now to pay. And my husband says, wow. And I'm like, oh no, how much is it? What is the damage? I look at it. Guys, I don't even know if you're gonna believe me. Like, I, I don't know if, okay, well, here it is. It was $25 for freezing and the removal of two teeth. Dollars, not euros, dollars, $25. So my husband's like, 
How much are braces here? $2,000! Dollars! dollars! We paid 5000 in Canada. And before you guys all come and say, well, Canada makes more money. That is not necessarily true. Some people do. Just like in Serbia, some people make more money. Some people don't. That's the reality. Okay, let me move on. Um, another culture shock that I got is coffee or tea to go is just not a thing here. Like, we're not feeling good and we're like, you know, it'd be great to go to Tim's or Starbucks drive through get a coffee or tea made for us. Now, I don't really drink coffee or tea, but this culture shock hit me when I was with my sister-in-law in Belgrade and she's like, I want a coffee. So we go into this um, ice cream place and she's like, do you guys have coffee? They're like, yeah. She's like, do you have coffee to go? And I was like, coffee, why, why wouldn't they have coffee to go? What do you mean they don't have co Why wouldn't they have coffee to go? Because Serbia is meant to sit, be social, relax, have a coffee and sit down. Not have a coffee running to your next location. Not have a coffee um, on your way while you're running to go and come, go to work or come home. It's meant for when you have a chance to sit down, have a coffee. Now, we are so used to, in Canada, North America, going through a drive through not really interacting except for, can I get a coffee? At the window, thanks. Moving on. Here, it's almost abnormal to take your coffee to go. Why are you not sitting down? They're almost confused. That was another culture shock for me. The next culture shock. <clears throat> when you have a meal in a restaurant, you're sitting, you eat your meal, the meal's over. In Canada, it's do you want dessert or coffee when the meal's over? No, here's the bill, no rush. But when you're ready, I'll be ready with the, the machine for the card. For the card. Um, here, if you don't ask for the bill, it's not coming. You know, at the beginning, we sat there waiting for a bill. Babe, it's been like almost 30 minutes. Like, are they not bringing us the bill? He says, can I get the bill? Sure. They go get it. It's not even ready yet. Because, again, we're in a social country. They expect you to sit there and talk. Another example of that was, we went to a restaurant, it was five o'clock in the afternoon in Belgrade Galleria Mall. And we're like, can we get a table? They're like, absolutely, but there's reservations for this table at 7.45. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, well, will you be done by 7.45? I'm like, uh, I'll be done when that meal's done and I'm done eating it. We're done. I don't know. We'll be out by like six. Sure enough, we were out by 545. I mean, we are excited about the culture of relaxing and taking your time, but we're also still conditioned to be on the go. So we need, we're working our way into this more relaxed life that we don't need to be go, 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 go. And it's not that we don't want to do it. We want to, again, we're just working our way into that. Another culture shock for me was I love strawberries all year around. In Serbia, that is a huge, huge, huge challenge. Now, I don't understand this challenge much, Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments below why it's such a challenge. But when I've asked locals, why can't I get strawberries all year round? The response is, they're not in season. Now, I wouldn't be questioning it if they weren't selling bananas, oranges, grapes, mangoes, avocados, what else do I see? Anyways, those are tropical fruits. I wouldn't be questioning it if I wasn't seeing those fruits, but I'm seeing those fruits. Oh, and I see blueberries, but I can't get strawberries. Now, my favorite grocery store, Supervero, which I'm gonna be making a video about, occasionally has strawberries that I'm able to get. And I'm like, oh, oh strawberries. 
Um, I would love if there were more strawberries or if there's some secret grocer that always has strawberries, oh, let me know below because I will be their regular customer. I know I've talked about it also before is that people here are extremely helpful when asked. Not to say they're not helpful if you don't ask, but they're also the type that if you don't ask, they don't know what you need. But they will help you and in return, they expect nothing but for you to come to their home and have coffee. And we're always like, you know, let's do this and this and we'll stop by so-and-so. And while we stop by, we'll just say hello. There's no such thing as just say hello. They're like, come in and have coffee. And I'm like, oh no, babe, like, like, can you tell them we had somewhere to go? He's like, we have to go in and have coffee. And I'm like, oh, I don't drink coffee. They'll give you anything. They will give you soda, pop, juice, coffee, tea. It's more the aspect of just sitting together and talking. And again, that was another culture shock because we in Canada never sat to get together and talk unless it was a birthday party and you kind of just sat around. But there was no just like, let's just meet to go have coffee at my friend's house and or let me show up unannounced at so-and-so's home and invite myself over and he's gonna give me coffee. That just wasn't a thing here. That is very normal, very normal. Another thing, the radio, it's uncensored. So at first I'm listening to the radio. My favorite radio station is Toya Pricha. I guess in the summer it's Moya Pricha which is your story or my story. My story in the summer, your story in the winter. It's my favorite radio station in Estova. And uh, when I'm listening to it, I'm like, did they, did they just say the F word? They said the B word. They said the A word. In Canada, everything is censored. I mean, I don't even know what they can say that's not censored here. They just say it. The kids just sing it. And it kind of takes off that whole, oh, don't say that, don't say this, you know? And it helps you when you're singing along in the car, jamming. You're not like shouting that part out, feeling like you're being some type of a rebel. <laughs> it's not a big deal. That's the way the song is. You can find it on the internet without the curse words. So censoring it from the radio at this point seems very redundant in today's day and age. And my last two culture shocks were the stray dogs and cats. Now, it is completely heartbreaking to me um, to see all these dogs and cats running around. And as if it wasn't hard enough to see that, on New Year's Day, a beautiful dog was driven into Verdnik, and that's not where I live, into Verdnik and dropped off. And you can see that where the collar was, and the owners ran them up a hill, ran back down, hopped in their car, and took off. It is so heartbreaking that someone could do that. The dog population and kitty population is large. I have my favorite stray and his name is Biggie and I wholeheartedly love him. And when we do build a house, I will be actually adopting him as long as he's still around with us. And I pray to God that he is because he's my baby. Um, and the last one I'm gonna talk about is cell phone plans. In Canada, a cell phone for one user would typically run you about $150 a month for their unlimited data plan. I do quotes because it's not really unlimited. You usually get a certain amount of gigs at the fast speed and the rest of the gigs are at a slow speed. Um, here in Serbia, uh, we have four cell phone plans and it costs us, I wanna say, call it 100 bucks a month for all four. All four. 40 gigs, and on top of that, you get 10 gigs per app that you, um, so there's apps you pick on your phone, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, you can assign an extra 10 gigs to just those, so now I have 70 gigs, plus, the gigs that don't get used roll over into the following month. We don't have that in Canada. In Canada, easily for us, it was like almost $400 for our phone plans when we were there. Um, and 
unfortunately that wasn't with having all those gigs and you're limited and some's fast, some is slow. The cell phone plans here are phenomenal. Dirt, cheap, and as if it wasn't cheap enough, I got a New Year's promotion that they're giving me an extra 150 gigs for the year to be used throughout the year whenever needed. It's just 150 gig kind of bank that pulls from it if I ever go over in a month. I was like, oh, oh. Like I was trying to hide the excitement on my face. I don't know why. But anyways, it is amazing. So those are my 10 culture shocks since coming to Serbia. I can't wait to meet with you guys again next week. If you want to know something in particular, hit the comments below. And as always, it's been a pleasure. I love talking to you guys. Thank you so much for all the support you've given me. Vidimo se, ciao. And I can't wait, Canada, to talk to you guys soon and hopefully get you out of your situation. And if it's not Serbia, that's okay. But get out of your situation. There is life beyond there. And I had no idea how great life could be somewhere else other than there until I stepped outside of that little comfort zone that I had and looked, on, uh, looked back at Canada with glasses on and said, that is not for me. Anyways, guys, ciao, bye, see you soon. Mwah.